this is the end of the Asia part, and we now have uh, an hour or so where we will look at Africa. And as you may be, uh, be aware of, uh, Africa has been for many years been almost a forgotten continent by, by the Western world, but not by China, and China has invested heavily. Uh, I think there's not one capital in one African country where you don't find a, a highway or a sports stadium or a, a conference center which has been built by the Chinese and very often sponsored by the Chinese. Uh, and uh, so there is a lot of business travel going into China. There are, of course, also uh, leisure tourists, especially going uh, for safaris or uh, going to South Africa for uh, gaming, for sightseeing. Uh, so uh, Africa is, uh, for, for Chinese, uh, a very important market. And one of the key countries for Africans to travel to is Kenya. And we are very happy that we do have a, a country country partner also in, in Kenya. And uh, so this is a Binti Safari, an inbound tour operator. Uh, and we will, we will see a, a video and uh, we will see uh, interviews with uh, the managing director of the Kenya Tourism Board uh, and uh, some other uh, information about this market. And afterwards also, uh, again, if, if the, the technology is working with us, and until now we have been lucky, I think, thanks to the good work of all the people around me here, uh, we will also be able to talk with Margaret, our country partner, in Kenya, live. And uh, again, if you have questions, please send them through us. So, of course, especially now for the African market, but also other questions, you can use our Twitter, our Facebook, uh, our, our email addresses, uh, and uh, we will be happy to answer them as much as we can. So, now let's have a look. This is about 20 minutes video. Uh, how is the Chinese upon tourism developing towards Africa and especially towards Kenya. Call me Margaret. I have over 10 years experience in the tourism industry from working in the airlines, direct sales, consultancy and global tour operations. In the last 10 years, I've gained an extensive experience and a deep understanding of the African tourism product and its markets. I'm the managing director at Binti Safaris, an East African tour operator focusing on tailor-made safaris to Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, and Rwanda. To make our guests get away memorable, the accommodations we use are boutique lodges, small intimate camps that are luxurious, charming, and set in dramatic sceneries. In these camps, our guests enjoy exclusivity, an enthralling experience most guests are looking for. Since 2013, Binti Safaris is the first country country partner in Kenya. I look forward to seeing China as the first tourism source market in Kenya. Kotri has trained and certified me to be able to deliver China-centric information in a very successful way. I strongly believe from these trainings, most companies in the tourism, retail, transportation and media industries will move from a passive into an active mode in order to get the Chinese coming. This dates back uh, about 10 years ago okay. when Kenya was given an approved destination status. Mm -hmm. So basically we'll be talking about from the year 2013 mm -hmm. uh, till then. Mm -hmm. What we've recorded and what we've seen is that the Chinese market has been growing quite substantially. Okay. Year on year we've been recording double digit levels okay. to the point where by last year, calendar year 2013, we reached about uh, 37,000 visitors from China. Mm -hmm. Now I know this number when you talk about 37,000 mm -hmm. is basically a very small number. Mm -hmm. But if you start from the premise that we started at zero level, yeah. or at near zero level, mm -hmm. very low levels of uh, visitation, mm -hmm. way back 10 years ago, this is quite, uh, there's been quite some growth. Mm -hmm. However, we do know that the potential is much, much bigger. Okay. And especially so when we bear in mind that the Chinese outbound market mm -hmm. has reached uh, more than 100 million. So we know the potential is there, mm -hmm. and we know that there's a lot of work that needs to be done okay. for us to reach the true potential for the Chinese uh, inbound market. In the last couple of uh, years, we've mm -hmm. mainly concentrated on the first tier cities. Okay. Here we'll be talking about uh, Beijing, we'll mm -hmm. be talking about Shanghai, mm -hmm. Hong Kong, and Guangzhou. 
And the reason is because these are the key markets, these are the key cities mm -hmm. where the outbound market is, 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 in, is, is, is big in terms of numbers. Yes. And besides that also, mm -hmm. uh, for us to be able to first and foremost get the Chinese to know about the country, mm -hmm. we had obviously to engage into the, into the strategy of uh, product knowledge. Mm -hmm. We started with product, product knowledge, okay. creating awareness about Kenya as a destination, mm -hmm. and also creating awareness about the, the various products that Kenya has to offer, because Kenya is a multi-product destination. Mm -hmm. Now that was the first level. And to get this to be done, we also appointed an agent mm -hmm. who is based in uh, Beijing, but has offices also in other cities like uh, in Hong Kong and so on and so forth, okay. so as to help us in terms of communicating the same message mm -hmm. in the local language, mm -hmm. Chinese. Okay. And we then moved on to the, the, the next level, which was creating a Chinese website mm -hmm. so that the information that is available on Magical Kenya mm -hmm. is also available in Chinese. Mm -hmm. And that therefore means the reach is, is extended. Mm -hmm. We have also uh, then moved on to consumer activations where we've done campaigns on the ground mm -hmm. to sensitize the Chinese market, mm -hmm. the outbound market especially, to learn about Kenya as a destination or to know about Kenya as a destination. Mm -hmm. And this is what we'll be talking about consume, in terms of consumer activations. Mm -hmm. Then at the primary level, mm -hmm. we also needed to let the trade, the travel trade, that's the two operators and the travel agencies, mm -hmm. to know about Kenya as a destination. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we've had programs involving uh, activities like roadshows, okay. uh, specifically, again, targeting those first-year cities, mm -hmm. uh, dealing especially with the Chinese outbound travel trade. Okay. That's the two operators who are mainly dealing with outbound market. Okay. And I must say that a number of them now have or feature Kenya mm -hmm. as a destination mm -hmm. in terms of visitation. Mm -hmm. The other thing also that we did and we've also been involved in is, uh, is uh, social media activations. Mm -hmm. You know the Chinese equivalent of Facebook, yeah. Weibo. Yeah. We are on Weibo. Mm -hmm. We also have, um, obviously, the other ch uh, uh, social media activations like uh, WeChat and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And this is basically to reach out mm -hmm. to more and more numbers. Mm -hmm. We've also had partnerships, uh, 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 presentations, okay. together with our national carrier, Kenya Airways. Mm -hmm. And this has been done in cities like in Beijing, mm -hmm. uh, etc. Now, the other activity also that we've done on the ground mm -hmm. is conducting sessions on product knowledge, okay. conducting training sessions, mm -hmm. again, to the travel trade mm -hmm. so that people are aware of the products and the packages available mm -hmm. in Kenya as a destination. And this we've done jointly together with our own uh, travel trade, okay. the tour operators and hoteliers who are based in Kenya. Okay. There are a number of other programs that also have been done, including mm -hmm. outdoor advertising. Again, activations being done uh, in the Chinese language mm -hmm. so that we can reach out to more people. Okay. Having done that quite a bit in the first year cities, mm -hmm. we are now moving, or we started moving a, a, a year ago or two years ago, mm -hmm. we started now moving to the second tier cities. Okay. And the second tier cities here will be talking about uh, cities like Chengqing mm -hmm. and Chengdu. Mm -hmm. And uh, recently also we had a delegation which was, uh, which was led by our cabinet secretary, Madame Felix Kandie, mm -hmm. uh, participating in an event called CIFIT. Mm -hmm. That's a China International Fair on Investment and Trade. Mm -hmm. Now, this was in a, in a city called Xiamen, mm -hmm. which is in the Fujian province, okay. a city that uh, before we have not done any activations. Mm -hmm. And the whole essence, again, was we need to spread out mm -hmm. to the wider market. Mm -hmm. With more than 1.2, 1.3 billion people, you cannot just talk about the first-tier cities yeah. and the second-tier cities. You need to spread your wings wider mm -hmm. so that we are reaching out to more and more people. Mm -hmm. And I must say that in this um, event, mm -hmm. much as it was mainly investment, there was also a, a tourism component. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we had presentations that were done mm -hmm. to the tour operators. We also had meetings that were conducted. Mm -hmm. And also, we had an exhibition that was joint, jointly conducted mm -hmm. between the various agencies in the Ministry of Tourism, mm -hmm. uh, 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 Ministry of East African Affairs, Commerce and Tourism, mm -hmm. dealing with uh, investment mm -hmm. and also with trade mm -hmm. and tourism. Mm -hmm. The other strategy perhaps I need to talk about is mm -hmm. partnerships with airlines that are flying mm -hmm. out of China. Okay. And we've done this with Kenya Airways. Mm -hmm. We've also done uh, similar partnerships with uh, uh, airlines like uh, Emirates mm -hmm. and also with Etihad and many others. Mm -hmm. And the whole essence is that as the Chinese outbound market grows mm -hmm. and as they spread out their tentacles so that they're not just traveling to the key areas of um, Europe, mm -hmm. the Americas market, and Southeast Asia and Hong Kong, mm -hmm. and as they discover and explore more of Africa, mm -hmm. we also want to be part and parcel of the benefit mm -hmm. in terms of the visitation. Mm -hmm. I must also say that um, a number of engagements also have been done, mm -hmm. including also farm trips, okay. bringing the Chinese travel trade to visit this country mm -hmm. and for them to see 
what products and what uh, yeah what products mm -hmm. that we offer okay. and we've done these farm trips again jointly with the, with some with the national airline mm -hmm. and also with other airlines okay. now a number of the chinese tour operators have been selling what we we'll call the triangle okay. this is masai mara mm -hmm. especially during the wildebeest then we'll the wildebeest wilde, wilde, wilde migration yes. from july to september mm -hmm. and also places like lake nakuru because of the flamingos mm -hmm. and now maybe moving up to uh, lake bogoria mm -hmm. and also places like amboseli mm -hmm. and mount kenya region especially uh treetops area mm -hmm. but what we've been trying to do is to show and to expose the chinese market mm -hmm. to not just this so-called triangle mm -hmm. but also for them to know that kenya a is a multi-product destination, mm -hmm. meaning we are offering not just the safari products, wildlife mm -hmm. safari product, mm -hmm. there's also a beach component, mm -hmm. there's also agro-tourism, mm -hmm. there's also sports tourism, so that Kenya is an all-year-round destination, mm -hmm. not just during the peak season of the wildebeest migration, mm -hmm. but also a country that one can visit all the year round. And I must say that we've done, who have come to this country, and I do recall a few years ago when we had uh, what, was so called, what was called the millionaire's uh, 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 excursion to Kenya, but we had a number of Chinese uh, high, very high-end uh, clients, okay. and they came specifically to sample our golf courses okay. and also experience a little bit of the golf safari mm -hmm. to go combine uh, co in combination with the with the wildlife safari. Okay. And the reason is that uh, we want to diversify our product base mm -hmm. and also diversify our source market. Mm -hmm. The other one also, which has also been growing, mm -hmm. is mice meetings, incentives, conferences, and exhibitions. Yeah. Yeah. And I do recall also a couple of uh, a while ago mm -hmm. we had an incentive group coming from China, mm -hmm. specifically coming to do incentive travel, mm -hmm. but at the same time enjoy the safari product. Mm -hmm. And they stayed in Amboseli, mm -hmm. and then after that eventually went to Masai Mara. Mm -hmm. And this was a big group, more than 200 people. Wow. We've mm -hmm. also worked very closely with some of the uh, big tour operators in the country. Okay. Like for example, Somak. Mm -hmm. At the beginning of this year, they brought in about 100 agents from all over China. Mm -hmm. And we work very closely together mm -hmm. so that we can build the traffic mm -hmm. from China into the country. Mm -hmm. Let me finalize also and talk about the partnerships also with the airlines. Okay. You are aware that uh, Kenya Airways is a, is a member of the Sky Team. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, that linkage or seamless linkage between clients flying by Kenya Airways mm -hmm. and then with the partnership with the China Southern, which is also a member of the Sky Team, mm -hmm. that makes it even easier in terms of the flow of tourists from China into this country. Mm -hmm. And we're also glad to say that uh, with a direct flight, which was inaugurated not too long ago, mm -hmm. direct from Nairobi to Guangzhou, mm -hmm. Uh, using the Dreamliner, mm -hmm. it makes it even easier for, for clients coming from China mm -hmm. to visit the magical destination that is called Kenya, the winner of the World Travel Awards, mm -hmm. best safari destination in the world mm -hmm. for the year 2013. Mm -hmm. Now, growing the numbers, mm -hmm. we need or we are going to be adopting two main strategies. Okay. One is product diversification, mm -hmm. where we need the Chinese we need to continuously educate the Chinese market mm -hmm. that Kenya is not just about a wildlife safari destination mm -hmm. and a beach destination. Mm -hmm. We have a multiplicity of products. We are a multi-product destination. Mm -hmm. And this is where aspects like mice mm -hmm. will come in very handy. Okay. Sports tourism, because mm -hmm. golf in China is played quite a lot. Mm -hmm. And there is an affluent level in Chinese who want to do golf safaris, mm -hmm. want to reach out to that target market. Okay. You also want to um, reach out to those who are interested in cultural tourism mm -hmm. and heritage tourism. Mm -hmm. Kenya is a rich country as far as cultural tourism and heritage tourism is, is, is concerned. Mm -hmm. And we are also leveraging on the fact that um, there is archaeological tourism mm -hmm. right now that is being undertaken in this country, mm -hmm. much more so because of that ship mm -hmm. that underwent a shipwreck, or those mm -hmm. ships that went under sh uh, uh, shipwreck mm -hmm. near the coast of uh, Shanga mm -hmm. and uh, during the time of the Ming Dynasty. Okay. And we do know that because of the collaboration between National Museums of Kenya and, uh, and the Ch some Chinese institution, mm -hmm. we can also build in traffic based on that. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we are looking at growing the market mm -hmm. by marketing more products mm -hmm. and a diversity of products mm -hmm. so that the Chinese now can start coming into this country mm -hmm. all the year round as opposed to mainly concentrating or having more visitors coming in during the, the peak season of the annual wildebeest migration. Mm -hmm. The ministry signed an, an MOU mm -hmm. last week okay. with China and mm -hmm. it was signed in Be Beijing. Mm -hmm. Now there are a there are a number of protocols in that MOU, mm -hmm. and as one of the implementing agencies, we'll be looking to grow the pie mm -hmm. by reaching out to more of the Chinese, because Kenya now has, has that uh, advanced uh, level of uh, an approved destination mm -hmm. as a result of that MOU. Mm -hmm.
-hmm. Now, we believe mm -hmm. China having overtaken Germany as the number one outbound market mm -hmm. should ideally be at the level of number one, two, or at the lowest, maybe number three. Okay. And this is we're looking at mm -hmm. growing the number mm -hmm. to at least mm -hmm. a five-digit number. As I've said to you, there are quite a number of uh, events and activities that we are going to be participating in. Okay. But besides those, there is also two major events, uh, two major exhibitions that we'll be participating in next year. Okay. One of them is called BITE, that's Beijing International Tourism Expo, mm -hmm. which is going to be hap happening in the month of June okay. in uh, Beijing. Mm -hmm. And then there is also ILTM, that's International Luxury uh, travel market, mm -hmm. which again also is going to be in the month of June mm -hmm. in the city of Shanghai. Okay. The whole lessons about participating in these events, mm -hmm. besides the CFIT, mm -hmm. CFIT, which we participated in at Fujian province mm -hmm. in Xiamen, mm -hmm. is to bring in now diversity. Mm -hmm. ILTM is a luxury market, mm -hmm. or travel it is a luxury exhibition, mm -hmm. whereas BIT, BIT is, a, is, is a consumer driven show. And we want to again target those two cities because those two cities, as you know, mm -hmm. are, are clearly uh, major cities as far as outbound Chinese travel is concerned. Mm -hmm. implementation of many of the flagship projects on which we have signed off in cooperation with Chinese public and private partners. China has secured a place of honor in the history of Kenya's economic development. Thank you, uh, Margaret, for this opportunity for me to speak to uh, the Chinese people. Um, remember, uh, let me first start by saying that um, the relationship between the Republic of Kenya and uh, the, the People's Republic of China is, is very close. Um, just over six months ago, we um, had um, the Chinese Premier visiting Kenya, uh, his official visit to Kenya. And um, our president, uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta, has also visited China. Um, as, as it, so in terms of our relationships, um, it, it's very, very close. And within that, um, what the two uh, uh, leaders agreed was to promote investments and also tourism uh, between the two countries. And so I've since visited China uh, to talk to uh, my counterpart uh, the Chinese uh, Tourism Administration um, so that we can find a way of working together to promote tourism. We have since signed an MOU, a Memorandum of Understanding, where within that Memorandum of Understanding we intend to promote investments between the two countries with regard to tourism. We also intend to do a joint promotion of, of tourism uh, between our, our two countries. We also intend to um, build capacity, especially of um, Kenyans, so that we are ready to receive uh, tourists from China and give them the best service. Um, you know, tourism is a service industry, and if you don't give a tourist um, the, rest, the right service, uh, they might not come back again, or they might not you know, tell uh, positive stories about the experience they have received. So for us, it's, it was very important that at the, at the country to country level, we signed an MOU and we um, have actually set up a committee uh, between um, the two countries so that we can roll out um, you know, uh, the specific areas uh, that we have uh, we have agreed to work on. The other area that we agreed to work on was on research and also exchange programs so that we have the right uh, capacity in Kenya um, in terms of you know, uh, cuisine, in terms of the people who can speak Chinese, in terms of, um, and, and also it, with the support of the hotels here in Kenya. 
Um, we're also looking at travel um, capacity. Um, we're very happy that um, we already have Kenya Airways, um, you know, uh, direct to um, to China, Guangzhou. But we are um, working on opening up, or rather, a, a direct link to Beijing and also uh, Sh Shanghai, um, and, and that will open, um, you know, give us more uh, or better logistics in terms of, uh, uh, you know, inward uh, uh, travel. So these are the areas we're working on in terms of uh, policy, in terms of, um, you know, um, increasing the capacity within our country. The other area I, I would want to talk about is that um, right now we have um, an East African uh, tourism visa where um, you know we would like uh, the, the tourists that come to Kenya to also have access to other East African countries and, and we think this is a very good um, opportunity or, or visa um, because with one visa a tourist can visit uh, other countries uh, to look at, um, you know, the various, um, you know, uh, attractions. Um, and, and we think this is something that has been received very well um, by, 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 by our, 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 um, our partners, or, or rather the, the, the tourist um, uh, destinations that we are targeting. And China is one of our big markets that we, we, we are targeting. It's very interesting that I talk about tourism, but really from what I, 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 just, I just came back from China just over a week ago. And um, it, the Chinese are also interested in the investment side. So I'm urging the, the Chinese tourists that you could use one visa, the same, um, you know, to come and visit Kenya, to or Kenya as a tourist, come in and, and, and sample what we have as a country and also use that opportunity to see what else you could do in terms of investments so that you're killing two birds with one stone. And I think this is something we, we are packaging and, and selling to the, to the Chinese uh, tourists. For the Chinese, um, the experience we've had, we, we have about 37,000 tourists coming from China right now and the numbers are climbing, we're getting more and more uh, tourists coming in from China. Um, I would want to tell them that there's so much that Kenya can offer. Um, they're very much interested in the animals, in the safari, um, and, 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 and we are just widening that for them to include East Africa so they can even see more variety of, 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 of um, animals and, and also, um, you know, uh, flora and fauna. But we would also like to tell them that uh, Kenya in particular is, is a gateway to East Africa. They could also come in and look at the other investment opportunities that they could, have, you know, that Kenya and the, East, the whole of East Africa can offer. Um, and, and, and so it is just more interesting than just being a tourist. Um, it could be, be that one visit that could give you an opportunity to be an investor also in East, East Africa. So I'd like to welcome them. Thank you. From the Windsor Golf Hotel and Country Club, voted Kenya's leading golf resort by the World Travel Awards 2013. I dare say the Chinese are coming and we'll be ready for them to make Kenya their African Beijing. Hello, welcome back to the Welcome China Global Webinar. So that was, I think, very interesting insights and uh, we are pleased that we could uh, listen to Mrs. Uh, Phyllis Candy, the Cabinet Secretary uh, of the Tourism uh, Ministry of uh, Kenya. And uh, so this was uh, brought to you by Margaret Morigi, the Managing Director of uh, Binti Safari. And I hope that we have a line now and we can actually talk to her. Yes. Margaret, how are you? I'm okay. How are you doing, Professor? Thank you. I'm doing very well. So uh, okay. I'm in Tampere, Finland. It's uh, about zero degrees here. Uh, I'm sure it's a little <laughs> warmer over there. It's sunny and shiny here in Nairobi, Kenya. Okay. So uh, thank you very much for this, uh, for the interviews and for your work. Uh, I think that's very interesting to see uh, that, uh, of course, also Africa is important for for Chinese tourists and, and Kenya, especially. And uh, so, can you explain us a little bit more about what, what your, how your own engagement with the Chinese market 
uh, has come about and, and how this is developing? Okay, well, um, Kenya is one of the countries in Africa that is getting um, a leading number of Chinese tourists coming to Africa. But that having been said, as the KTB MD said, it's, uh, the number we are getting is very little compared to the number of the Chinese outbound tourists. And our engagement is that uh, we, we hope to work in future a lot with the KTB and the Ministry of Tourism to start the CTW uh, trainings in all the counties in, in Kenya. So we'll definitely start with the counties that um, are, are, the big source, uh, are the big tourist attractions here and then uh, roll up the programs. And hope probably by next year we'll have 10 counties in Kenya that have the CTW destination level status. Okay, so, so actually we have a, we have a question from, uh, from our audience. So uh, I'm, I'm happy to say okay. we can see on our computers that there is a huge number of people following uh, this webinar. So uh, the interest in Chennai for tourism is, is obviously uh, still going very strong. And so we have a question from Mrs. Okay. Paloma Gatabaki from, I don't know where, okay. from somewhere in Africa. Uh, and Margaret, that's uh -huh. a question for you about Kenya. So can you give some more ideas about what is the average spending of Chinese tourists when they, when they travel to Africa? How many days are they staying? Or can you say, is there package tourists stay this kind of days and, and, and uh, ZEF organized travelers another? So how much time they spend and how much money they spend? Can you give us some more, uh, a few numbers of, of this for Kenya? Okay. Well, thank you so much, Paloma Gatabaki, for that question. And uh, I would say most of the Chinese visitors when they're coming to visit Kenya and Africa in general, we're looking at an average stay of about seven days, which is um, just about probably six nights. And most of them, what they'll be spending, it, allow me to give it in three tiers. For those traveling into the four and five star hotels, they'll be spending an average of about 500 USD per person per night. And that will average will come to about 3,500 USD. If they're going to the next higher, uh, which is a boutique lodges, they're spending about 800 US dollars per person per night. This average com average comes to about 4,800 US dollars per person. Now on the higher market, for those who are pure luxury travelers, they're spending about 1,000 USD per person per night. And this average comes to a total of about 7,000 um, 7,000 USD per person for the whole trip. Okay, well, these are impressive numbers, actually. So uh, I assume that this is a higher spending uh, than the average visits to Kenya. Am I right? Um, well, the thing is, East Africa tends to be a more tourism destination um, compared to probably South Africa itself. Um, so most of the time, what you're looking at is um, the price will be inclusive of um, the accommodation stay, it will be inclusive of the domestic flights here. If you're connecting from Nairobi, if you're connecting then to Masai Mara, it will also include the park fees, it will also include conservation fees if you're staying in a conservancy. So it's um, everything included. But I've given the prices for more of the higher end properties in Kenya. I see. So I think a question, uh, well, we cannot avoid to talk about, it, even though it's a, not a such a pleasant uh, topic is of course that in West Africa, uh, which is far away from Kenya, but uh, in the mind of, of, the, of the public, at least in Europe, it is Africa. So we have the Ebola problem, we have uh, the health problems, uh, unfortunately, yes. many people are dying. Uh, so is this affecting uh, tourism in East Africa as well? And are there any measures uh, taken by, by the government or by the tourism industry uh, to reassure people that Nairobi is, I don't know, 1,000 or so kilometers away from the next uh, country where there's an Ebola case. So what is, how much is this influencing your, your business? How much is this a topic? Okay, well, definitely uh, together at KTB, we noticed the numbers drop down when the Ebola uh, news started going on. But uh, one of the things that uh, the nation has taken is they have facilities at the international airport, which is one of the border points of coming in. And uh, it's very strict and they are observing all people coming from West African countries. And in case anyone is noticed with, a, with any of the symptoms, um, they are quarantined. Um, and this is also happening in the other border points that we have where people probably cross by road. So 
Kenya is guaranteed is a safe country. We do not have any out. We do not have any case known of Ebola. So I like to say we are very far from West Africa. The airport is is taking a lot of measure to uh, check everyone coming in, and no case has been confirmed in Kenya. Okay, I think that is a reassuring to to hear that. So my my final question uh, would be so hopefully that this crisis can, can be contained also uh, in West Africa. So how do you see Chinese urban tourism to Kenya and to, let's say, East Africa in general within the next three, four years developing? What is, what is your forecast? Okay, um, as Mr. Moriti said, is, uh, we, the Ministry of Tourism and together with the Kenya Tourism Board, they have been doing a lot of product knowledge in China itself. And they are also working together with the trade partners here, which includes the hotels, it includes the media people. Um, and what they are doing is sensitizing people about having Chinese people speaking in the hotels, welcoming them. But one other thing that I'm hoping to do in the future together with KTB and Ministry of Tourism is to have the CTW quality trainings so that we are adequately telling the people this is how uh, we need to adapt our products according to the uh, Chinese customs. Um, so with that, we hope each and every hotel will be able to um, attract its own Chinese visitors without having to go through the, uh, the broader channel. And um, the statistic we're looking at is hopefully to hit 100,000 probably in the next three years. Okay, good. Thank you very much for that. I think that's all we have time for. So thank you, Margaret, for the call. Okay. I'm happy that we could make this. And I hope we meet soon, okay. uh, maybe in November at WTM in London. And uh, so thanks again. And I'm yes. sure uh, we, we will hear more from you in the future. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you so much. And goodbye. Thank you. Bye.